What's the deal, baby? Y'all didn't know it is the big box out, box dog. K poke through the dope. Hit the talk to this box. Shout out to that boy Slim Season TV, man. But much respect to y'all. And then shout out to that boy D Town Boxing. D Town the H Town. It's all love. It's Texas. You know what I'm saying? But uh, let's get to this. These Bud Bunnies, man, part two. I, I gotta make another one, bro. I've been busy, man. Like, I'm in school, and then, you know, my damn ball joints broke on my truck. So I, I'm, I just got through. It took me all day to work on that. You know what I'm saying? So I got them on. I still got to do the tie rod ends. So, <laughs> that, and that's a motherfucker. But hey, I'm gonna do that shit. But while I was working on that, I, I was still getting notifications, you know what I mean, to my phone. And I look, and this motherfucker writing a novel. This nigga wrote a novel on one of my videos. So, you know, I, like I said, I don't run for no smoke. I do read comments. But if you want bullshit, I'm not going to read everything. So this nigga come on there talking about some, I think his name, WC something. I don't know. But he's a Bud Bunny, okay? Let me tell you something. I'm, I'm a fan of Bud Crawford, okay? I got people who are fan of Bud Crawford who comment on my channel, and they'll advocate for Bud, but it's not, they don't spew nonsense. You know what I mean? Like, they be real. They be like, yeah, Bud ain't fought better competition, but it's due to da 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 whatever their reason is. You know what I'm saying? And I would rather just, I agree with them or disagree with them. You know what I mean? But then you got dudes like him. This nigga. So this nigga wrote a novel talking about how Bud Crawford got six consecutive knockouts and he's fought better competition and L. Spitz fought Kell Brook, but Kell Brook was a, 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 a beat up fighter because he went up to 160 to fight Triple G and his orbital bones already broke. And But when he fought, when Kell Brook fought Terrence Crawford, he was coming off a three fight win streak at 154 and then he came back down to fight Kell Brook. Look, look, let's stop right there, okay? First of all, I'm gonna start with the end. The last one I said. Bro, I ain't trying to hear that shit. All right? Kell Brook went up to 154 to fight Errol Spence. Who the fuck was he fighting at 154? Was he fighting Jamel Charlo? Was he fighting Tony Harrison? Was he fighting Jason Rosario? Was he fighting J-Rock? Was he fighting any killer at 154? And, and I ask, when I ask these questions, these boys ain't got shit to say. This shit ridiculous, bro. When I ask these boys these questions, it's nothing to say. They can't respond. They ain't got shit to say. But you wanna wait and come up with novels about how Bud Crawford and knocked out. Man, stop playing, bro. Let's go to the next one. He, they used that excuse about Kell Brook. Cause see, they tried to use the Mikey Garcia excuse, but now they can't use that excuse because we didn't debunk that shit, right? So now they trying to use, they going for Kell Brook. So this nigga says that Kell Brook was a shot fighter when he fought Errol Spence. That's Cap, all right? Kell Brook, yeah, he got his over the bone broke by Triple G at 160. What was Kell Brook saying before he fought Triple G? You talking all that shit, this is Mitchell White, I feel strong, and Mitchell White went up there, and hey, I ain't gonna lie. He was whooping Triple G ass in some of them rounds. But he got his over the bone broke, right? He fought Errol Spence. Was forced to fight Errol Spence. He didn't want to fight that nigga. He was forced. Look, a lot of these dudes be forced to fight Errol. Right? They don't be wanting to. It was two crazy motherfuckers. Well, I say three. Sean Porter, Mikey Garcia, and Ugas. Them motherfuckers, the crazy motherfuckers that was like, I want to fight Earl Spence. That's just what it is. You know what I mean? That's just what it is. That's just how, that's just how, that's just what, what happened. Right? But at the end of the day, Kell Brook was forced to fight that nigga. He didn't want to fight Earl Spence. He moved up to 160 to avoid fighting Earl Spence. Y'all forget, he didn't want to fight that nigga, bro. Earl was calling that boy out for the longest. 
they was ex doing extensions and everything. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, go back to your research. Then Aaron finally get the fight. He go over there and that boy, home country, backyard, where he from, and Earl beat him. I ain't trying to hear shit. Terrence Crawford fought a shot fighter, okay? You wanna know why? Because Bo Mack said that in the Amir Khan versus Kell Brook press conference. You don't believe me? Go listen to that conf press conference. Bo Mack said, we knew Kell Brook was a shot fighter when we was for the fight him. Does that sound like he fighting an elite fighter? It sounds like selective matchmaking to me, in my opinion. These boys, he said that. They knew what they was doing, bro. Stop playing, bro. These niggas come on here getting their feelings, and then when you ask them questions, they don't have answers. When you sit there and ask these niggas questions, when you sit there and be like, hey, bro, who did who did Kell Brook beat at 154? Tell me right now. Don't matter if they was a leader or not. What's their name? Off the top of your head, did you watch those fights? Did Kell Brook look dominant in those fights? I'll tell you, it was a couple of them fights. Kell Brook didn't look dominant. He beat them, but it was back and forth. He looked basic. Then the nigga go back down to 147 to fight Terrence Crawford. His trainer was even telling him, hey, bro, you need more time. Tell them no, because you need more time. We need a full training camp. We need, because Bud and them wanted to give him a short training camp for the fight. And Kel Brook was like, well, shit, I'm going to go get me a train off Instagram. <laughs> I'm going to go get me a train off Instagram. And, you know, I'm going to fight Bud Crawford. I feel like I can beat him. And I ain't gonna lie, he was giving, he was, he, he was beating Bud. But in that fourth round, I think it was the third or fourth round, Bud just saying, I'm tired of this shit. <laughs> Landed a punch, and that was it. That was the end of the fight. Now, granted, I still think Kevin Bud could have kept going, but that's my opinion. You know what I mean? That's my opinion. I feel like Kevin Bud could have kept fighting. I feel like Kevin Bud, you know, had enough, but. I think they was looking at Arrow broke his orbital. Triple G broke his orbital. But, bro, enough. Of, I don't need to go into detail. These Bud Buddies need to get a reality check. Okay? I understand Bud Crawford is your Lord and Savior. But at the end of the day, you got to be realistic, bro. You know what I'm saying? You got to be realistic. The nigga ain't fought nobody. Don't. And then this thing, when you say that in their mind, it's like. <laughs> Excuse me. When you say stuff like that, and they mind, they interpret you saying Bud Crawford suck. Nobody saying that. Nobody said that Bud Crawford suck. Nobody said that Bud Crawford's a horrible fighter. Nobody said nothing like that. All we're saying is he has not fought elite talent. Okay? It is a fact. Your Dennis Ugas has a better resume than him at 147. Sean Porter has a better resume than Terrence Crawford at 147. Keith Thurman has a better resume than Terrence Crawford at 147. Danny Garcia has a better resume than Terrence Crawford at 147. Why are all these other guys having better resumes than him? And if he if and if he fought all these elite talent, he wouldn't have left top rank. He wouldn't have been suing top rank. He would have still been there. And that's what I'm saying, bro. Like, but y'all want to sit here. Y'all just here to cause confusion. Y'all here for smoking mirrors, bro. This stuff right here, bro. Like, y'all boys got to get your mind right, Jack. Like Pip C say, get your mind right, Jack. That's just what it is. Because y'all boys come on here and y'all try to spread this false gospel. That's false. Nigga, we sticking facts. That's all we do. We speaking facts. Everything I say. You can go Google it and it's proven. Now, an opinion is me saying Earl Spence will stop Terrence Crawford. That's an opinion. 
An opinion is Terrence Crawford will be there. Spence. That's an opinion. But the facts are Terrence Crawford has not fought the better competition. The facts are his resume at 147 is lackluster. Hell, you can even argue in his career in other weight classes. He ain't fought. No names. You can make that argument. You can say, mm, this dude had a better campaign at this weight class than you did. You can say that. You can vote. You can do that, bro. That's all I'm saying. We just keep, we just sticking to the facts. Everything I say, you can go Google it and be like, oh, yeah. He telling the truth about that. Uh, yeah, he, he telling the truth about that. <laughs> but these niggas don't know they boxing. They don't even know boxing. They come on here and think they know boxing. They come on here with emotions. We come on here with facts, with knowledge, because we watch these fights. I've watched all of Terrence Crawford fights. I've watched all of Aaron Spears' fights. I can sit here and give you a breakdown of every fight. His train of thought in that fight, everything. That's all I'm saying at the end of the day, bro. We have to be honest. You can't sit. It's cool to support a fighter. Nobody's ridiculing nobody for supporting the fighter that you want. It's sports. It's entertainment. But you got to be truthful. Like I said, an example would be somebody coming to me and saying that Dallas Cowboys suck. I'm going to sit there and tell them that Dallas Cowboys do not suck. I don't like them, but they don't suck. That's truthful. We keep it a thousand. We don't sit here and come up with fallacies and fictitious. You don't do that, bro. All y'all be doing that. Like, I don't, I don't understand your logic. Like, oh, I'm going to come up with, you know, this type of fallacy in my mind. Well, Crawford has fought the better. No, that nigga ain't fought nobody, bro. He know he ain't fought nobody. You know he ain't fought nobody. Everybody know he ain't fought nobody. Don't take away from his talent, though. It don't mean he sucked. You know what I'm saying? He was just with the wrong promotional company. Bud had ample enough opportunity to go either represent himself, which I encourage, especially a black fighter, to go do that. Go represent yourself. Start Tess Bud Crawford Promotions. I don't see that. Where's that at? Start that up. Be your own boss. You know what I mean? I don't see that. So this is stuff I'm talking about. You know what I mean? Like, you have no excuse. But he sat there and re with Bob Arrow at top rank. And where did that get him? Bob Arrow publicly disrespected him. Man, stop playing with me. I'm gone, man. Big boss. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Bud Bunnies, man, y'all can stay mad how you want to. I'm going to keep this chef hat on, this this apron, this chef hat on, and I'm going to cook your ass. Boss gone.